AT&T Fiber presents a straightforward moment. Game on, baby. This looks great. Yeah, streaming is amazing with AT&T Fiber. Must be nice being a gagillionaire. Yup, and the straightforward pricing has made me want to be straightforward with you. I'd much rather stream ice dancing. Is that Alma Hansen and Bjorn Anders? Oh, uh, straightforward is better. No equipment fees, no data caps, no price increase at 12 months. Live like a gagillionaire with AT&T Fiber. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details. Welcome to mini episode 188 of Real Life Ghost Stories and I have three spooky stories for you and the last story comes from May the 18th 2022 and story number one comes from Melissa. I wrote in a while ago with some of my dad's stories, the lights in the desert episode, about his archaeological escapades in the American Southwest. We lost my dad to a cardiac episode this past March and while it didn't come as a shock as his health had been declining for quite some time, it still felt like it was way too soon. True to his nature, he didn't want a funeral, and requested that we sit around as a family and tell jokes and stories about him, and this was one that came up. For most of his career, my dad was one of the very few archaeologists employed by the government, which meant that he went all over the US, including Hawaii. This was way before cell phones were a thing, and he and my mom had a set time that she would call him every night when he was away. This particular night, my mom called at the prescribed time, and my dad answered, sounding panicked and downright scared. Obviously concerned, my mom asked what was the matter, to which my dad replied, I'm pretty sure my room is haunted. This was silly, of course. He was staying in a brand new hotel. No one can remember exactly where he was, as this was close to 30 years ago. So it hadn't had time to accumulate murders or suicides or even any accidental deaths. My dad went on to tell my mom that he had been sitting on the bed waiting for her call, when about five light orbs the size of tennis balls came floating slowly out of one side of his room, crossed in front of him and floated into the other wall. Needless to say, this had spooked him out enough and just as the last light went through the wall, his TV turned itself on at full volume to a static channel. After jumping out of bed, swearing and looking for the remote, swearing some more and not finding it, he ripped the TV power cord out of the wall just as my mom called. This was his first night there, so after talking to my mom for a while and calming himself down, my dad decided that he must be overtired and jet-lagged. In the morning, on his way down to the continental breakfast, he happened to walk past the kitchen, where there was a sign telling people to make sure that the kitchen was vacated by 10pm and that all the knives had to be placed in the locked drawer. He thought the bit about the knives was a little odd, but didn't think much of it until he was picked up by a colleague native to the islands. Shit, Spence, I didn't know they'd put you up here. You might want to change hotels before the Huaca Ipo mess you up. The government being the government, they'd put my dad up in a hotel with the best rates, which happened to be a brand new one, built on what had long been considered a path of the night marchers. Nobody from the islands would stay there, and apparently they had problems keeping guests for more than a few nights, hence the good rates. My dad's colleague had even heard that the night marchers routinely went through the kitchen and threw things around, hence the need to make sure the knives were all locked up. Ladles and rolling pins flying around were one thing, but I'm pretty sure knives being wielded by spectral warriors violates the OSHA. My dad and his colleague went up the mountain to document a Hayu a temple or sometimes just an altar to one of the island gods. It was a place to leave little offerings like fruits or vegetables and my dad had brought along his fantastic 90s camcorder to record it and the surrounding areas. 
His colleague told him not to bother trying to get a clear picture of the altar as every single shot he had ever taken had come out completely fuzzy. But my dad reasoned that since it was a video, he wouldn't have an issue. Sure enough, when my dad was all settled into his new hotel that night, he took out the camcorder and reviewed the footage he had shot that day. The jungle around the altar was clear. The audio was perfect. But every time the camcorder passed over the altar, the video went to static. When he had his pictures developed at home, the same was true. Everything around the altar was clear, but in every single shot, the altar was a smudge. Oh, and just a quick fun story about this same altar. Apparently, my dad's colleague's nine-year-old nephew had been up there playing with some of his friends and urinated on the altar. The kids had laughed about it and headed home a little while later. By the time the nephew got home, all his plumbing was swollen and painful. His grandmother was over at the time and after taking off her sandal and smacking him a few times, told him to go back to the altar bring a bucket of seawater to wash the altar, apologise profusely and leave a basket of fruit as an offering. The kid waddled off to complete his tasks and a few hours later, he returned tired and sweaty, but with all of his appendages the correct size and shape. When I was reading this story, and I thought to myself, when I was doing research about the night marchers in Hawaii, one of the things that was said is that sometimes the night marchers appear as, as like lights that will pass through an area and there have been so many stories and reports of buildings that have just been plagued with night marchers. You know, anytime the night marchers are moving, the building has been built in the path of the night marchers and therefore things get thrown around, things get messed up, things get damaged and that's what you get for building a hotel in the pathway of the night marchers. I just think there's things that you should never mess with. Like, for real. Altars from, like, ancient culture is no way, man. That is not something to ever mess with. And if I was heard from a local person that if you try and take pictures of something that's going to come out fuzzy, whatever, I'd be like, I'm taking your word for it. Obviously, I know it was your dad's job to be able to film and document these things. But he must have seen some crazy shit on his travels, you know? All good films. Look at Indiana Jones. It all starts with archaeology, you know, all that magical stuff. And I think that should be a good life lesson for anybody. Don't wee on an altar. If you don't want to have a swollen penis, don't wee on an altar. Today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Welcome back, everyone. So good to see you all back again this week. It is such a shame that Chupacabra couldn't make it, but given the reports this week that he is, in fact, a dog, perhaps Monsters Anonymous is not the best place for him. Now, today, we're going to recap on what we learned last week, which was... <coughs> That's right! Hello Fresh, America's number one meal kit. You guys were really paying attention. So how can we use HelloFresh as a great alternative to hunting and consuming humans. You've all got New Year's goals and HelloFresh is here to help you achieve them. Skip the grocery store and skip that eternal rat race of hunting humans and take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your cave without all of the worry of being caught on camera and put in a paranormal YouTube compilation. Okay, okay, Mothman. Mothman. I appreciate your contribution, but remember last week? We talked about using our indoor voices or indoor echolocation. You are very loud in this small space. Also, Please keep the death prophecies to the end of the session as it upsets the other entities. Thank you. Let's continue. With HelloFresh, eating well in the new year can be stress-free and delicious. With over 35 weekly recipes, they have the options that you're looking for to help you achieve those goals. Choose calorie smart and carb smart recipes or even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins or adding protein that isn't human to a veggie dish. 
Also, I'd like to think I wasn't this patronising as a teacher, but I probably was. And I can tell you that I have received a whopping 89 HelloFresh boxes thus far and I love it. Helps me to eat better, save money, limit my food waste, etc. Okay, Bigfoot, Bigfoot. I love that you are trying really hard, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you to remove my leg from your mouth, okay? Some people are into it, not me. Why don't you use that energy to go to HelloFresh.com slash RealLifeGhostStories22 and use code RealLifeGhostStories22 for 22 free meals plus free shipping. Now, everybody say it with me. That's HelloFresh.com slash RealLifeGhostStories and use code RealLifeGhostStories22 for 22 free meals plus free shipping. AT&T Fiber presents a straightforward moment. Game on, baby. This looks great. Yeah, streaming is amazing with AT&T Fiber. Must be nice being a gagillionaire. Yup, and the straightforward pricing has made me want to be straightforward with you. I'd much rather stream ice dancing. Is that Alma Hansen and Bjorn Anders? Oh, straightforward is better. No equipment fees, no data caps, no price increase at 12 months. Live like a gagillionaire with AT&T Fiber. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details. And now a special motorcycle weather report from Progressive. And today, expect mostly sunny conditions with a high on life that can only come from cruising down the road on two wheels. Kids will wave, dogs will bark, and cyclists in padded shorts will instantly regret their chosen mode of transportation. Whereas you, on the other hand, will look super duper cool. Back to you in the studio. This has been a special motorcycle weather report from Progressive, where every day is a beautiful day to ride with coverage from America's number one motorcycle insurer. Get a quote today and see what you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. And story number two comes from Gloria. I gave birth to my first child in one of the COVID-19 lockdowns. After a tough year, I was hit during pregnancy and after his birth with postnatal depression and anxiety. This was the first time I'd ever had to deal with serious mental illness and I felt utterly lost. I didn't have any friends and my family were hundreds of miles away. I was so lonely It would be months before I had a conversation with anyone other than my partner face to face. When my son was nine months old, I decided to go back to work. This was a really hard decision because I wanted to be with my baby, but I also knew something needed to change and get me out of this depressive hole I was in. I spent days crying and crying, unsure whether I'd made the right decision. I didn't like my career field, but I wanted a sense of independence and purpose, so it was a tough decision to make. A few days before I was due to start work, I had a very low day. My son was out with my partner and I was sitting in our flat in tears again due to this depressive episode. I felt so unsure of myself, so directionless, and like nothing was working out how I thought it would. I'm not spiritual in a religious sense, but I do believe our loved ones pass on somewhere and keep an eye on us. Very occasionally, I would ask my grandparents who died in 2014 and 2017 for help in my own head. I don't know what I expected them to do, but I suppose out of desperation, I hoped they would step in and somehow sway the universe to work in my favour. I was very close to my grandparents growing up and I would stay with them on a regular basis. When my granddad died and my family sold their house, I only wanted one item from it that reminded me of them. It was a large painting from a scene of the Thumbelina story, which they had hanging on the wall in the hallway. As a child, I would refuse to go asleep as I was scared of the dark, so I would sit in the hallway until they came up to bed, sometimes for hours. I used to love looking at this painting, and if there was one thing in the world that would remind me of them, that was it. On this very dark day, I asked them for the first time for help out loud. I looked up to the ceiling and said, I can't do this anymore. I'm failing at everything and I need you to give me a sign that I'm on the right track or that I'm where I should be and I won't feel like this for the rest of my life. Please, please give me a sign that things will work out. Let me know if you can hear me and that I'm not as alone as how I feel right now. The next day I took my son to the local park and on the way back I passed an Oxfam charity bookshop. I had no intention of doing any browsing, but something told me to go in. I don't know how to describe it, but it was like my feet just took me in there on autopilot. I walked into the shop and headed to the children's section to see if they had any books for my son, when something caught my eye on the bottom shelf. It was a jigsaw, 
but on the front of it was the exact same Thumbelina painting which had been hanging in their hallway. It isn't a hugely common painting and it was the first time I had ever come across it besides at my grandparents' house. I couldn't believe it. I had asked for a sign and they had sent me one. At least I took it as one. I bought that jigsaw and I planned to put it together and frame it as a reminder that they are always there and watching. Since then I've started medication for my postnatal depression, developed healthy practices, moved location, changed jobs and career field altogether. And I am for the first time in years feeling so happy and confident. I'm loving motherhood and life. And I think that this small sign was them telling me to keep going as there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Perhaps it's all coincidence. But either way, I'm happy that that experience happened. You know what, it might be all a coincidence, but whatever happened, you asked for a sign and you came across something that was so intrinsically linked to your grandparents. You know, it wasn't like, I don't know, something that was vague or random. It was something that specifically reminded you of your grandparents and something that is not something you'd come across every day. Like you said, you've never come across it anywhere else outside your grandparents' house. And I think it's lovely. I think that's a lovely sign to get, especially as you spent so much time with them. And of course, they would be looking out for you and rooting for you every step of the way. And just as a side note, like I've never had children. I've never been pregnant. But so many mothers find pregnancy and the time after birth. Obviously, the birth itself is pretty horrendous, but it can be a really lonely and hard time. Postnatal depression is very real. Postnatal anxiety is very real. And from what I can gather, can be absolutely horrific and isolating and just a really, really horrible, difficult time. And you can feel so alone. So I just wanted to say that I'm really glad that things are better that you got the help that you needed and that you're feeling solid and happy and content and uh, yeah if you're listening to this and and you're going through the same thing it can get better it absolutely can get better and you're not a bad mother you're not a bad father you are doing the best that you can and it is really really hard and story number three comes from hannah From birth to age six, I lived with my mum in a masonette. For non-UK listeners, a house divided in two with one person living on the ground floor and one on the first floor, both with separate entrances. Every night I would have nightmares of the same horrible man. I can't remember the nature of the dreams other than they really frightened me. I always felt like someone was watching me in that room. It wasn't until I was an adult and my mum was ill that I brought it up and we talked about how weird my dreams and nightmares were. We hadn't ever really talked about it before. I assume because she didn't want to make a big deal of it and frighten me more. She agreed that it always felt off in that bedroom, and that she envisaged a man who wore overalls, despite never seeing anything. We moved out of that place when I was six, and moved to a house literally down the road, and my nan bought our old place off my mum. Just after my mother's death, the lady who lived below us in the masonette, now my nan's neighbour, stopped me outside and told me that she had a visit from my mum and that she was in fact a medium. She wasn't always the kindest neighbour and could sometimes be argumentative and seemed to despise of us a bit so it shocked me when she approached me to tell me this. She shared that my mum wanted to say thank you for all that I did when she was ill. I was really taken aback. I had known this lady for years but had never known that she was a medium. She told me she didn't really like to tell people in fear of their reactions. Her telling me this sparked a memory so I decided to ask her, does our old house have a spirit living there? She seemed fairly unfazed by this question and replied, yes, the area where our houses are built used to be a plant nursery and there's a gardener wearing overalls that passes through the houses. I nearly fell over. I managed to choke out overalls. She looked confused and just replied with, yes, overalls. My mind went back to the conversation me and my mum had just before she died, where she said she imagined a spirit of a man in overalls in the masonette. My boyfriend who saw me through the window said I went pale like I'd seen a ghost. I just want to reiterate 
this lady didn't particularly get on with my family, so there's no way my mum would have had a conversation like this with her. And like I said, she hadn't told anyone before she was a medium. The only conversations were normally a simple hello in passing or to complain about something related to us. My mum passed away in December, so near Christmas and in the weeks between I spent a lot of time with my cousin who is a big believer in the spiritual world and has a lot of stories himself. He has even been told by three psychics that he has the gift. Anyway, he was reading a poem he found and it was called Mothers in Heaven. I rolled my eyes as I'm no longer a believer in religion but nonetheless he continued. He read the title again and as he did, a bauble flew off the Christmas tree and bounced on the floor landing across the room. These baubles were well secured on the tree and no other baubles had fallen before or since. The branches of the tree were extra long and these ornaments were placed so far back on the branch. The timing was so weird and left us all with a feeling that she was watching over us. I always wonder after reading these stories what that feeling is like when you just know something. Something that you just know in your, like deep in your soul. You just know that it's a man. You just know that he's wearing overalls. You've never seen him. You just have that feeling. Like what does, I I always wonder what that really feels like. And how strange that all those years later that woman is able to tell you it's a gardener, he's always wearing overalls. I would be absolutely blown away by that I think and maybe the bauble being thrown was your mom's way of being like I am still here don't roll your eyes I'm here and I'm looking after you thank you so much for listening to today's episode thank you to Melissa Gloria and Hannah for sending in your stories remember the last story came from May the 18th 2022 and if you have a story that you would like to share you can send it to real life ghost stories podcast at gmail.com you can also check out the website real life ghost stories podcast.com if you are desperate for extra content you can sign up to patreon patreon.com forward slash real life ghost stories where for five dollars a month or two dollars a month you get access to heaps of extra content and every main and mini episode completely ad free and on that note i shall see you next time